Now we're going to take a brief look at prototyping and how you might be able to use them in your organisations. Prototypes are an effective way to make ideas tangible and to get feedback quickly. At the end of the hands-on activities, we arrived at a few possible solutions using the six ideas in three minutes worksheet. From those ideas, you would choose the ones that most likely sit in that sweet spot of viability, feasibility and desirability. Prototypes let you create an early version of your product or service. It's less expensive than creating a complete product or service that people don't want or can't use. There are many different kinds of prototypes. Choosing the right one depends on factors like resources, time, and the medium that makes sense to test it in. We'll walk you through a few examples of early version prototypes. This is an example of a customer journey map. These maps show the future state of a product or service and how a user might experience it. You can present a map like this back to your users and get their feedback on the various points of the new journey. We've also included a simple customer journey template in the toolkit. You can use it to visualise how your users go through an existing experience. Watch out for negative emotional points in the journey to identify opportunities for new design ideas and solutions. You can also role play a service by mimicking a real world environment. In this example from a previous project at FutureGov, we tested how an open office style police station might work to help the station feel more open, transparent and less intimidating. However, we learned that the openness caused participants to worry about being overheard by the people around them. So even if your prototype fails, it's still a good outcome because it prevents you from going down the wrong path and potentially wasting lots of time and money. Storyboards are visualisations that describe how your idea works and steps through what the user's interaction and experience will look like in a specific activity. And finally, let's look at paper prototypes. They are a cheap and fast way to create something tangible and interactive using everyday materials. Anyone can draw boxes and circles. We often use this technique to simulate websites and apps and have users interact with them. As the user taps on the paper prototype, we swap out various views and show feedback. You can even use this technique to create early prototypes of documents such as information packs, to test the flow and substance of your content. Again, the idea here is to have something tangible to test with and to get feedback from your users. We have included a few more tools in the toolkit that you might find useful, including worksheets to help you test your prototypes. Similar to the research phase, the test planning sheet helps you work out beforehand what you need to test, who you'll be speaking to, your questions, and how you plan to carry out the test. Make key assumptions and uncertainties the centrepiece of your tests. It's important to plan your tests to make sure you're finding out what you need to know about your prototype and that your solution is going down the right path. Use the test findings tool to capture results from your test in a structured and measurable way so you can iterate on the feedback that you receive. And finally, we want to remind you that the design process is iterative. Learn something about your user, build a prototype to test and measure your outcomes, then do it all over again. Every time you go through a cycle, your solution should be more effective in solving your user's problems, taking you closer to a more complete product or service. We really hope you enjoyed this workshop on human-centred design for NGOs. We've given you an overview of the human-centred design approach and methodology, a chance to practice your research skills, and best practices to ensure you're delivering the best possible solution for the right problem. We recommend taking some time to reflect on what you've learned in this workshop, what you did well, what you can improve on personally and as a team, and how you might be able to use this process and these tools in your organisation. You'll find links to the toolkit as well as these slides in the description of this video. 
If you have any questions or need help with the tools that have been provided, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much for your attention.